what do they say? You know, right frequency, right vibration, and then good energy, you know, would connect the good people. So tonight, you know, I have a basically a good guest here. One is the Miroslav. Miroslav, thank you very much for coming and bringing your guest. And uh, to, let's say, our viewers, you know, you would say, Hi, I'm Miroslav. Miroslav who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is M Miroslav Vainovic. I live in Los Angeles last seven years. I grew up in Croatia. I was born in the town of Knin in southern part of Croatia and in, in close to the Dalmatian coast. Uh, then my family moved to uh, Adriatic coast, uh, to, to the city of Rijeka. So I feel very close to both of these cultures, uh, Croatian and Serbian, because uh, my hometown is, um, is it was was predominantly Serb, and uh, then I grew up in the in part of a country that that's uh, predominantly Croatian. So I identify myself with with both cultures. Unfortunately, uh, war happened over there, and and uh, my entire family is displaced. Uh, Ninety percent of them left in one day in on um, August 5th 1995 and most of them live in Belgrade now in Serbia that's uh, in, in general the, the family background um, I, I, I studied economics and but al always was very interested in arts um, I, I did some theater when I was younger um, spent large amount of my uh, uh, youth traveling I, I lived in Germany, France, Spain, Andorra, Italy, uh, studied languages and did uh, snowboarding. I, I'm a snowboard instructor. I didn't know all that. Listen, <laughs> Olvi Kieri, are you single or married? <laughs> I'm so, single. <laughs> so now you have all, all pretty much, you know, said, you know, for that uh, love chat, Snapchat, whatever, you know, they have, you know. But, you know, uh, nobody really cares about what you were saying, you know. What we care about tonight <laughs> is about your friend that you brought here. So if you don't mind, you know, if you can just uh, introduce us. Okay, this is the first time I'm doing this, so <laughs> I, I, I always think like it's an, it's an interview. Yeah. Well, uh, well, the reason why we are here with Zoran, uh, I, I met Zoran on, on an event in Serbian church, and uh, I, I found out that Zoran... Uh, is has a, a podcast channel called Tesla Vision, and also I, I bought some amazing T-shirts that that he had uh, Tesla with with the humankind that was completely. Uh, uh I need to know, you know, who's the guy drinking my beer in my <laughs> garage, you know, and you know, we having pleasant time. Well, I'm representing my my friend, uh, very talent talented uh, actor and musician. There and a filmmaker mm -hmm. and a, a producer, uh, Aaron, Aaron Guzzo, mm -hmm. um, who was born in Indiana, so he's uh, a real American. <laughs> 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 and um, he's a very good friend and very talented musician, and I like his style, and I, I'm so curious what's going to happen uh, in the future with this project. But he's going to Serbia and Croatia. He's going to follow Tesla's footsteps. And I was also surprised he's going to go to Ma uh, Manastir Ostrog, spend the night there, maybe stay with my family. I mean, definitely stay with my family. <laughs> oh, Aaron, <laughs> let's let's steal this mic, man, you know. <laughs> so let's steal. Uh, well, first of all, welcome. Thank Second you. Of all, uh, you are really on kind of interesting path, you know, so I really would like to hear from you. How, how did it happen? My whole life growing up in Indiana, I've always wanted to create a musical um, I uh, of course saw the big ones and listened to them religiously and just hoped I could someday make something half as good as that and I really as much as I like to say I'm a creative type I don't I've never found subject matter that I found I could really set music to I've tried and mm -hmm. it's it's always come up flat and a few years ago I, I I stumble upon this online thing about this some guy named Nikola Tesla mm -hmm. and it was akin to like finding out like about a war that happened you never learned about it was like how did I go 20 something years 
and not learn the name of, ever hear the name of the person that brought the era I'm living in. Yeah. And I've never seen such a difference between um, the legacy and legend of someone and lack of knowledge or interest in him. And um, it does seem in the last few years there's been a huge explosion in Tesla interest. Thank you, Internet. Um, and so I don't think I'm alone. Obviously, you're not alone. There, there are people out there who are discovering mm -hmm. who he is and what he's done. And uh, unfortunately, though, I do think, we're, at least in America, I, it seems we're in the minority. When I tell people I'm creating this musical about Nikola Tesla, there's a few people who go, oh, my goodness, that's amazing. And But most people go, who? M music stuff. You know, is it parents, you know, <laughs> yes. somebody, you know, they, they, they did, you know, so. Uh, when I... I can tell you right now, I cried all the way to my first piano lesson. Mm. When I was in first grade, I did not want to play piano. I, I was of the ignorant belief that that's, that's girl stuff, that's mm. sissy stuff. That's, I didn't want to, I mean, it was like six or seven, you know. I, I'm not thinking long term at that age. And I, I had in my mind that it would be a class full of like Juilliard maestros mm. and me playing like chopsticks. And I, was, so I remember getting there and feeling so relieved it was just me, mm -hmm. just me and the, te the teacher and myself. And uh, I remember going, oh, okay, I can do this. No one will see my mistakes. No one will see how bad I'm going to be. We, I saw Phantom of the Opera uh -huh, uh -huh. And I, when I was like 13, something like that. And to just see, oh, my God, I, I, you know, I'm there crying. And it's, it's because of music. It's because of yeah. a story told via music. And I never felt anything like, you know, I'd seen, you know, like any kid, a hundred movies and read, I'd read, of course, lots of books and I, but nothing had just whopped me in the head, like, uh, seeing the biggest of big stories up there. And, uh, so that was really the spark. And then I, what else is there? And so that was the first one where I saw what, mm -hmm. here's the best case scenario where it's successful and it's actually well written and, uh, I, I from there discovered, of course, so many other shows, and um, I mean, look in high school, it didn't hurt that suddenly I realized, oh, girls who won't talk to me will talk yeah, to me yeah, if yeah, I yeah. play piano. That's the shallow answer, but it's true. And then a point came after that where I didn't even care if anyone's listening, where it was just for me. Yeah, someone else um, had to work much harder than you guys with the uh, guitar and uh, music <laughs> and poetry, and you know, <laughs> I wish you know that. But then again, uh, I actually did not go to school for music. I, I, my, my logic when choosing college was, well, I've spent my whole life studying music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I w wanted to go into film, and so I, mm -hmm. I went um, in Chicago to Columbia to film school mm -hmm. and uh, for writing. And that actually helped, I really do think, helped because that was all about structure, structure telling a story, mm -hmm. and, and here's the, once you peel back the special effects and the superstars, here's the actual blocks of how to tell a story. And so I, I, I'm, I'm hoping and thinking that uh, a musical sort of pulls both of those worlds of mm -hmm. musical knowledge and theory and mm -hmm. storytelling. Because, you know, the more I learned about story structure the more I knew I didn't know and yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, you know just to go into music abandons storytelling just to go into movies or TV abandons music and so this is sort of the marriage of those two passions well I think it's the same as like when you see some you know, rock superstar shredding on their guitar it looks like they're just having a hell of a lot of fun and I'm sure they are but for 99% of them, there was years of dun 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 You don't see that part. That's the part they don't, you know, it just looks like they were born with it. Mm -hmm. I think same is true with storytelling. Before that amazing movie that took your breath away came, that person probably wrote some crappy movies that were necessary. That were necessary for them to learn to get to that amazing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's they're, they're both... They both have those foundations that um, hopefully uh, I've, I've got. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. So the first time that you, do you remember, you know, the first time you heard about Tesla? Was it because of rock and roll band Tesla? <laughs> no. Or car Tesla no. that you were dreaming to drive? No, it was it was that, uh, mm. that oatmeal article. It mm. was like an infographic. Oh, it, was, okay. it was very tongue-in-cheek and very funny and like, 
you know, they, they called Edison every four-letter word you can imagine, and, you know, it was a fun read, and at first I didn't think much of it. That's entertaining. What a what an interesting guy. And uh, somehow in, like, one late-night Wikipedia binge where, you know, it was way too late and I was just in the bowels of the Internet somewhere, I, again, I think stumbled upon just the Wikipedia page. And, oh, yeah, I remember this guy. And as I went down that rabbit hole of reading this live, I said, there's no way this is real. This mm-hmm. has got to be a sci-fi story. Someone's hacked Wikipedia and put in a made-up thing. And the more, you know, of course, no, it was all real. This is, and um, then, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward. That was years before I even put together on the musical. The uh, anyone who's ever tried to make it in movies learns that those wheels turn very slowly. And so I was extremely frustrated and and thinking about giving up and 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 leaving Los Angeles and. So I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll go to grad school. And I was applying to, NYU has a musical writing graduate program. And so I was applying to that, and one of their prompts is pitch an idea for a musical. Mm-hmm. And so I, was, uh, I had three ideas. One was like a gangster musical. One was something stupid I made up. And one was Tesla. Mm-hmm. And I gave it to my roommate, who is now my writing partner on the show. Uh, and I said, can you proofread this and give it a read? And he read it over, and he said, Aaron, do you have $100,000 to spend? And I said, no, I don't. And he goes, well, why are you applying to this school? Do you know people in New York? Are you looking? Are you wanting to move to New York City? And I said, not, not really. And he said, Aaron, write Tesla. Write this show. There's something in this. There's something. I don't know much about the guy, but I think you, you might have tapped into something. They haven't made a movie about it yet, so the story will be new to enough people that it's interesting. But there's also a big enough fan base that those people will come as well mm-hmm. and so I realized he's right and I looked at I, I, I had already written some music with no lyrics just here's a melody that I liked and I realized this actually kind of fits this this Victorian era and but it's still kind of rock and uh, I it, it actually was fun just sort of oh this can be this scene and and the research part of it then happened and it never felt like it was never boring. I know. Okay, now I have to read this book. It was. Always, I was found myself actually excited. It was like, again, I felt like I was reading a sci-fi novel. What's going to happen next? And um, the laying the. It's about half of the show is songs I'd already written that I sort of put in, and half of it then came with the workshop at the Actors Gang. Uh, I'd been music directing some shows there, and uh, I'd been fortunate enough to have some original songs in their shows. And I've been looking to do something original. I thought, you know, their their space, the Actors Gang space, is in a hundred old year old building that used to be like a trolley stop, and it looks like something out of a steampunk world. And I just looked at this. Yeah, this could be Tesla's lab. And so that was two years ago. That was two years ago. I had the, the just the basic score. I hadn't. I just knew which song was which. And then. For about a year, I really didn't work on it too much. I was looking for work. I, my life was, sure, you know, sure. real life hit, as it tends to. Yeah. And uh, it's been in the last six months. I was looking for a lyricist. I've never written lyrics. I, 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 I didn't believe in myself on that. I was trying to get someone else to. And it turns out, if you ask people to put in hundreds of hours of work, they want money, which I didn't yeah. have. And I realized, I, how could I possibly ask someone to create the score for free? You know, I, I simply yeah. don't have. Yeah. And so... Um, but generally, let, 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 let's face it, you're doing this for free. You're doing it with mm-hmm. a passion. I mean, when yeah. you believe in the project, you know, you hope if it's good, you know, that will result in some revenues and, and producing, you know, some kind of benefit one way or the other. The dream for me is to one day <laughs> sit in the audience and watch the show. That would be so. That would that's, be. Uh, I, I would mean, love that. That, that. that that's ultimate dream of the creator. You know, he's creating not for sake of money. He's creating for sake of uh, his emotion. You know that he wants a lot to see things alive. That's yeah. the thing. So so I really recognize that. But you you don't think uh, like for example that you can find people you know that they're equally enthusiastic you know to be a lyr- lyricist. I mean you know it's there. They're, how should we say, intellectual property one way or the other. You just think, you know, that people are much more driven today by money and not by emotion? Well, I'm on the wrong so, side of the country. If I were in New York City, I, you throw a rock and you're going to hit one. Mm-hmm. But, you know, out here, 
Uh, I mean, it's even the most good-hearted person who really does just want to create something beautiful has to pay rent. I know. You can't tell the <laughs> landlord, you know what, I'll give you $100 in rhymes. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's... And so... It's one thing to ask someone to, hey, will you do this favor for me? But it's, an, I mean, the, the reality <clears throat> of creating lyrics to a full-length musical, most of which is sung. It's not like a Disney mm. movie where it's talk, 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 and then four or five songs. It is 90% sung. So when you were doing, you know, those stuff, you know, like, uh, what's the name, you know, for, for screenplays, one way or the other, you have the structures, you know, how different is, like, musical versus uh, storytelling in sense? You On know? the most basic level... Uh, mo uh, films have three acts. Mm. A show, a musical has two acts. Okay. Um, however, I think I have unintentionally sort of written this as a three act thing, and we just kind of have a break in the middle of act two, uh, where it really is childhood growing up, the rise to fame, the years of fame, and the battle with Edison, uh, which he in a sense did win uh, in the sense of the world did go with alternating current even mm -hmm. if maybe Edison won the battle of yeah. public opinion and then act three the second half of the show's act two you know is the later years and where it goes uh, mm. which which mo a lot of biographies by the way their their biography of Tesla ends at like 1905 or 1910 mm. after um, Warden Cliff was mm. shut down the guy lived 30 years after that. He, he was alive for several years, but all the biographies are about, you know, the current war and the, the battle with Edison, but he had, you know, persons alive several years after the action's over, and that, that's a little bit of what the show's about. I, I, I wanted to have uh, innocence in uh, discovering Tesla, but since I already came here from uh, Europe, uh, from former Yugoslavia, where Tesla is a legend and uh, my first contact i remember when i was a kid was on a, on a fifty thousand note yeah in, in this pose where where he's reading his blueprints he looks like a saint and behind him there's beams of light and this wonderful sculpture i saw it when i was a kid um i saw it in gospich in, mm. in in lika i saw this sculpture i recognized this uh, uh work of art and um, so there's layers of, of um, contact with the work and, and legacy of Tesla. But I kind of wanted to start from the beginning. I, di I, I didn't want to too much to be, um, uh, uh, to bring that perspective, of course, because a lot of things are involved with his name in former Yugoslavia, starting from politics, from uh, the fact that uh, somebody blew up his sculpture the same sculpture i saw it was blown up in the war with a dynamite I didn't know that. yeah mm. and um you know it's it's definitely people who are uh, my friends who were studying at uh, a, a technical university their uh, knowledge of tesla or or their I, I was always curious what is it what is it you know and then but not until i came here America is rediscovering Tesla first. I don't know. I, I came to U.S. and then I found out about Elon Musk, who made the car, uh, named the car after him. And so I think, um, in in a way, uh, it's better just to come with a clean mind and uh, mm -hmm. and see what what what's going on here in in this country because this is where he really made it. And uh, I think this was the place. This was the only place where he could make it. And I think that looks like now uh, this death that was left because Tesla died in poverty and I mean not in poverty but he died forgotten from the world. He, he was in poverty. <laughs> he owed a lot of money. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. yeah, he owed a lot of money. He he died in this luxury hotel, but uh, uh, of course his life was was the life of a a, a saint. I think. Mm -hmm. That, that's what I see. So I see us. I definitely feel um, his spirituality. I think he that, that was m equally important about him as much as his uh, um, how he was downloading technical knowledge from wherever source, th thanks to the education. So the discovery of that 
that uh, a geek America that mm. this this um, um, th there's a rediscovery of Tesla here was for me it was m walk up the interest and see oh hey, w what is it what is it that okay I want to know he invented the, the 20th century he predicted the future he built up the the, the world in, w in which we are living um, now but also as a human being how did he live how did he what price did he pay he definitely did pay, pay a price we know that from his autobiography his solitude and and uh, what happened to him uh, uh, how he got screwed up from from people who were better with money I think also discovers a lot about uh, a soul of people that he belongs to. It's it's very very typical for Slavic people. They're very, m much more thinking with the heart. Mm -hmm. So let's say yeah, that's 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 the thing that I discovered here. Why do you think uh, that? And somebody told me there is almost like hundred screenplays <laughs> written about Tesla. Right. Why do you think you know that didn't kick in? Um, well, it's not a remake of anything, so there's right there, there's points away <laughs> from it. Uh, it's not a sequel or a prequel or an adaptation. Well, I mean, I mean, I joke, but the the truth is, um, there, there are a few movies in the works now that I've that I have heard about, um, which to me seem very interesting, but. Well. Are but you I'm, sure that they're making it? Or oh, not? of course not. I don't. I don't believe it until I see the poster uh, of course, off the four hundred five. Of course. Uh, but the, the the truth is, I think it would be difficult on screen, where you're not in people's heads. You're just seeing outside to convey the stakes, the idea that the future we now live in was under attack, and Nikola Tesla was the defendant of tomorrow how to portray that how do you you know if you make it true it's it's easy to become like this heady intellectual thing that that no kids are going to want to you know you, you a movie needs to either get dates in or families in if it's just a, a niche of of people who are, are uh, scientifically and historically curious I think that's going to scare executives. They want to know that every family is going to have their kids and their wives and grandmas. And, and um, the only like depiction I've seen of Tesla was in uh, the the Prestige with David Bowie as him, but he wasn't the main character. You have this; it was a fictional story, you know, and he just has a cameo. Um, and again, until the last few years, I'm not sure the public was aware enough for the executives to go, "This needs to happen." Um, so I'm I'm split on if I want a movie to happen. Of course, on one end, of course, that'd be great. But on the other end, would that then cause this show to be like, oh, Aaron's just copying off of this movie that came out? It's just you know, even you know, you know how Tesla said, you know, today is their time. You know, in future it's going to be my time. You know, so the right. question is, you know, is it the right time, and uh, how do we determine the right time? You know, I mean, um, he was uh, how should I say? You know, definitely person you know that has a place in the history but uh, again it doesn't have a in history book in the educational system it doesn't have um, that much room in uh, philosophical you know uh, forum you know to debate about you know how could somebody uh, predict something that we are just realizing today right you know whether it's internet whether it's uh, remote control whether it's uh, you know star wars one way or the other you know mm -hmm. that that would be definitely something you know to say well did um, what did they mean you know by by old testament you know did somebody also predicted you know certain things or you know because when we go back and we we need to work on the pyramids you know we <laughs> need to in, interpret you know what's this all about and to figure out you know what's the history so he's very close close to our existence so we really are not getting in deep inside of the mind of the, 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 the Tesla. Well, that's one thing that theater, I do think, has a leg up on movies, is that there's a lot of really absurd elements in this show where his hallucinations that he had, we can just run with on stage and portray and, and see the, the, the inner work. Because that's what, to me, is what's interesting about him. It's not just the inventions and legacy but like the fact that it came from 
the mind that it did that was he would have a hard time telling apart reality from the hallucination and he had so many irrational phobias and 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 uh, his OCD to me that's very fascinating that he mm-hmm. was crippled by so many things that that can be hard to portray on film I'm not saying impossible uh, how much did you structure you know pretty much a story do you know you know more or less what you want to do and is it just to the lyricist or where are you at where I'm at now is um, my writing partner and I are, are writing the lyrics we've got five completed songs that we're, we're proud of and would show to other humans and then a few others that aren't quite there yet I mean and there's like 15 more to go so we're only sure. maybe a fourth done and I am finding that I'm, I'm actually loving writing lyrics. I like the challenge of it. I think it, it cuts fluff out. When you're screenwriting or writing a novel, it's easy to have five pages describing this tree mm-hmm. that no, you know, is interesting at one in the morning when you're writing it, but your readers don't care. When it has to rhyme, though, as soon as everything's got to rhyme, you got to get to the point. you got to get to it because I don't feel like coming up with ten rhymes about this random thing. Uh, so I'm I'm grateful in in looking back that if I if I had handed it off to someone else uh, that would have been great of course but uh, that w- I would have never had the experience of diving into that and um, so that you know that's where it's at right now is the the lyric writing form and it is as far as the structure we have the outline we have what the melody of each song I have I mean I have it 150 page score written. Mm-hmm. It's just most of it is just the notes, and I've just written in, in this song, he, th- this happens. In this song, one of his hallucinations messes up a dinner party, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, as I write the lyrics, we're finding sometimes we stick to exactly what we meant, and sometimes when the song's done, I go, oh, this isn't, this has taken off to somewhere totally different than what was on there. You know, what's, the, what's the idea behind more or less your your idea with the trip you know overseas i guess a, a sense of who am i to get into his head and claim to know the inner workings of one of the greatest minds of humankind you know i've if i've never walked where seen where he lived breathed the air where he was and yet I'm trying to create the definitive piece of entertainment about his life, you know, and I don't have the connection that Miro does. I don't have the connection that millions of other people who do live in Croatia and Serbia and that, and, and that area have. And um, it just, it, it wouldn't seem right to, on opening night, to say, yes, I know the Tesla story. Yeah, I can read a million books. I can read a, all the articles. But wouldn't it be a shame to write the show, open the show, and go see it, see the patents, see the original uh, creations, prototypes, and go, oh, mm. yeah, I got it wrong. To be honest with you, um, I'm a little bit fat and tired, you know, of people claiming uh, his existence or claiming his nationality or claiming his, you know... Uh, whatever feeling sorry for him one way or the other and uh, you were saying also you know how you want a really extreme professional approach to give you know and everything is how should i say accordingly right and i'm fine with that hmm. the only thing is uh, what i'm not fine about you know is basically that you are absolutely entitled to your own guts and feeling you know right. and if you're an artist you're going to express uh, uh, that guy the way you see it and you you have full blown right to do such a thing and, and, right. and definitely it's beautiful that you want to kind of you know for your own sake you know get that a little bit more deeper you know feeling about uh, the, 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 that person you know right. and uh, it's very noble that you're doing that but then again there is no reason you know to has it to to portray it really in the and everything absolutely right. absolutely let me let me clarify then i guess what in, in as many words i should just say if i'm going to break from his story and take a liberty i want it to be on purpose i want it to be because i said yes i know this is how it happened but for the sake of the show i'm gonna do it this way instead of finding out oh i broke from the story by mistake mm. uh if, if i am gonna take a liberty let it be an active departure from like example one i'm making is um 
uh, Tesla's lab burned down. I believe, I might get this fact wrong, but I believe it was 1895. Mm -hmm. And for the sake of the story, I am moving that up a few years simply because it's, it's I'm, I'm making it happen at another low point in his life. <clears throat> Simply because that's a visualization. That is a visual low point of his his lab being wrecked. It on stage that worked. We see, oh, things are bad. Mm. Instead of just a guy sitting in a chair going, "Man, I'm bummed." <laughs> uh, so that like that's one departure where I'm sure you know the people who do religiously follow him are going to go, "Hey, that's not how it happened." And I'm going to go, "I know, yeah, 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 yeah. I moved it up five years. Sorry." Um, so and. and too long did not read. I'll just say, let my let the departures be on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right now they're opening that boulevard in the Hamilton over there in the Canada. You know, so there is a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, statues you know being placed left and right. But that's how should I say, um, personal initiative. Right. You know what I'm doing as well. It's not really to recorrect you know history. It's just uh, fulfill my call it ego and satisfaction <laughs> and uh, it's worth talking about. when you're saying is uh, uh, are we gonna correct the history I don't think so it's not our you know how should I say job to correct something or what it really mm -hmm. doesn't matter you know I mean he's finding his place by itself you know somebody told me you know that actually Elon Musk is a Edison guy but the only reason why he got you know Tesla name because it's a free domain so it's ugly sounds ugly but I really don't give a damn for that because you know Elon Musk did beautiful things and he's continuing to doing beautiful things and the guys on the roll and on mission you know and you you see you know that he's changing world I mean yeah. he's the one you know who won electrical car war yep. because the electric car was killed before yeah but he won so that, that, that's the beauty about Elon Musk. You know? And so every time I see a Tesla go by, it's like a, a victory in my day. I go, well, go. it's not mine, but it's here. There you go. <laughs> that's now, one more car not polluting. And you can imagine if he, you know, kind of, if he ends up being successful with those uh, home batteries, you know, that will definitely, you know, help with the global warming, definitely will help, you know, with all kind of stuff. You well, know. he's bought Solar City, which is encouraging. That, that's one thing, you know, but yeah. the thing is, you know, what he's talking about, those batteries that's supposed to go in, into the house, you know, that will accumulate. That's the answer, you know, on all problems I regarding the solar energy. That, right. That's the thing, you know, so. Well, it, it does seem like, and again, who am I to get in his head? But it seems like he looked at, he, okay, here, what it was Tesla trying to accomplish, but couldn't simply by the limitations of his time, and said, okay, it's been 100 years, 100 years of technological development. I'm going to pick up where he left off here. I'm going to pick up where he left off here. Of course. And uh, that's, hey, that's a victory. You know, that's, that's any person that says, you know, someone who went into engineering instead of the arts like I did, who says, you know what? I want to work at Tesla. I want to work at SpaceX. For that to be something that that kids can want to do, hey, that's that's a victory, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's something I could never do, but uh, for that to be a dream of people is, you know, is great, and to have his name out there. Um, and uh, one other point, off topic, as far as why maybe Edison's name stuck around and why Tesla's did not. Uh, one of the books I read pointed out that. Edison left behind GE, hmm. so we have uh, a company. So that so now history books kind of have a bit of a reason to put his name in. Is there, here's a tangible thing, still in operation today from him. Tesla did not leave behind a company. Hmm. Everything when he died, everything went with it. You know, outside my workplace, there's a, a sewer drain right right outside, or you know the manhole cover. And printed on it in big letters is Edison. And every day I have to walk over his name <laughs> on my way into work. But it you know, covers the sewage, right? <laughs> right. And meanwhile, a Tesla car is going by outside. There, yeah. is, there is plenty of jokes about that. You know, to me, Edison was a great inventor. He did so many good things. Uh, he was a great uh, quality, if you want to, you know, capitalist guy, you know, one way or the other. And um, I have no, how should I say, no... I mean, he was protecting what it's his, you know, what he was, he was doing what he was believing in. But the thing is, Tesla is just a, 
call it if you want to foundation for some new space age you know he's just a stepping stone as well you know that we have to step on him and continue his uh, more or less you know ideas you know because he points us in the right direction talking about uh, you know anything you know the, the 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 resources you know that we are wasting uh so Miroslav, tell me a little bit more about uh you know are you part of this project you know are you uh what's your stuff you know regarding theater and, and the love for theater I, all I can tell you is I, I'm in love with the theater. I, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, your, your question was only about the theater, but I, I, I kind of want to bring it um, that I see this duality in, in, in life. Um, Tesla would have not made it if he didn't come to the United States. It, this country was built up on this uh, principle of egotism and Edison pretty much in person, in per personifies the the the, uh, the 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 push that uh, uh, allowed uh, certain individuals to to come here and to flourish and to bring their uh, creation and and um, I think what happened was actually like I, I like what you say Zoran that there's no need for tragedy those things work together but what is that compared to eternity you know Tesla yeah. is is imprinted in in uh, human history forever and you know now uh, he's somewhere in heaven and and in, in in his he doesn't care that he died uh, uh, uh without money that's not the point the, the 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 whole point is always um that humanity deserves to to have free energy humanity deserves not to live in misery because if you see our life you see that humans are delicate creatures. We cannot survive like animals. Uh, now you have some scientists who are saying that that's the proof that we are not of this world. We we, we basically we cannot survive mm -hmm. on the sun. We cannot survive if we don't cook our food. So uh, if you love humanity, you love to help humanity, and and uh, humans are are gentle. So it took us such a long journey to to get to to the point where we, where we don't die of flu where we don't watch children die of smallpox or or, or mm -hmm. and part of that long journey of humanity was probably to learn and why did it happen so in, in such a long period of time i don't know but uh, the victory for humanity is not to be slaves definitely and i think tesla contributed to to uh that freedom so what we did in in the theater uh we, the theater company w w that we are part of uh they're famous for that non-linear looking at things it's mm -hmm. always go to the beginning or go to in the middle and then come back to the end and then go back to the beginning it's not about structure itself. Structure itself has to exist, like uh, what Aaron is doing. He, he he's def, uh, he's uh, educated uh, to to he, he's trained and educated, and, and of course he can use that the same way like a pilot could drive an airplane. Mm -hmm. um, but the main thing is to make a discovery and. Uh, wake up the emotions in 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 us and uh, uh, celebrate Cele celebrate it's always it's, life should be celebrated humanity should be celebrated tesla's contribution to mm -hmm. to life and to what, the, the age that we live now but also um the theater also can play an important role in um it's almost like a, um alchemy and and uh books and uh, i mean literature and poetry and music and theater uh, uses its its own chemical formulas to to produce a, a reaction it doesn't have to be logical to some people but what's important is what it leaves inside of you so um i think we're gonna take this kind of journey aaron tell me uh 
your dad is what that uh, father and son bonding or <laughs> after many 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 years of not talking or <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, this will not be a, 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 a father-son drama movie. Uh, uh, he and I went. We went to Cuba last year, cool. uh, and that, I think I think the bug got him there. Where you know he's retired, and mm. uh, I, I, they still live in Indiana, mm. so I don't get to see my family a whole lot, and you know that's that's sad. And um, I think this is as good an excuse as any to go sure. see the world, see something. He's been reading Tesla books as well, just because it's fascinated him. And um, I, you know, I think he's. I mean, we're not just. Also, I should I should say, we're not just doing Tesla. There's gonna be a few days where, since we're in the area, we are sure, gonna do course, things like Dubrovnik course, and just see it's beautiful, right? Just yeah, see yeah. The, the 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 sights. But um, yeah, I I think um, uh. He he's wanting to see the world as anyone would. Yeah, it's, and, cool. uh, it's no fun to see it by yourself. <laughs> you know, we just need a couple millions, you know, to move this <laughs> right. project to happen. You just know, your spare millions you have. There uh, you go. <laughs> the the biggest thing I think that would help because I, I I have not gotten an official green light from the actors gang yet. You know, basically where they've left me is they've said, Aaron, we can't green light it till you have a draft to bring us. Mm-hmm. You know, we can't green light a show if we find out, oh, you can't write music, you can't, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it stinks, and now we've committed to it. So they, where they're at now is they said, when you've got your first draft, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to present it to the gang, the actors gang, and uh, here's the show, we'll have the actors just read it, and uh, some, you know, basically a radio drama version of it. And I think that as far as your question, what can the people out there do to help? I think it would really help if they knew that there's... An audience for this mm-hmm. that there would be people excited to see a rock opera dramatizing the, the story of Nikola Tesla uh, that there would be a line out the door that I mean yet we I can talk all I want about how the, the noble aspect of just wanting to add, to you know show this to the world but that doesn't happen if there's no audience yeah. if it's performing to mom and dad out there uh, <laughs> so I think if they could see that it won't just be the hardcore theater lovers but it it will be people who've never set foot in that theater people who wouldn't normally ever go see a musical you know there is the the misconception that musicals are just kick lines and jazz fingers and uh, so people go, oh no, I, you know, I hear that all the time. I don't like musicals. I hate musicals. And then I go, well, do you, do you like Disney movies? They go, oh yeah, I love that. I'm like, well, that, those were written by musical composers. Uh, so just let them see that, yeah, there'd be an audience, not just not just in Culver City in Los Angeles, but to anywhere the show were to go, that people would say, hey, honey, let's go see, let's go see Tesla the musical. Uh, that that's what would really get this going is a a. Uh, the knowledge that it's not just Aaron in his living room hammering it out on the piano for no one. <laughs> so since Aaron is making something that can easily be either a, a theater piece or a movie, uh, and, and that's going to be a huge project, and who knows uh, uh, what's going to happen with that? You know, that's his uh, that's his work. I, I'm helping him because uh, I, I like the project from the beginning, and it's very noble. But uh, my proposition for you, Aaron, is uh, uh, make a lot of footage. And make it personal. Make that yeah. movie about your journey with your dad. I know that Tesla, you know, vested power in me, that, so I can officially declare you as a Teslians. <laughs> I would love to wish you good luck on your journey, Thank and you. we'll be watching you, helping you, and um, no matter what, admiring your work, what you guys are doing. So. I'll try to make it worth admiring. So thank you. Yeah. There you go. Thank you very much for stopping by. Quality, Zora. Of course.